Hello, this is Stuart Fleming. Tonight we're going to be going over some of the ADF security uh, details that are um, available um, in an application. And I do have an application that's already built. Um, basically, it's got a department's view, um, all of the plumbing that goes along with it, employee's view, and um, all of that plumbing that links it, our app module. basically just show a master detail and um, I have a main page which consists of a table um, some of the security context information that we'll go over later here and we also have a, um, a task flow that's put on here as a region not dot not, not dynamic but just a region and this button here will allow you to go over to this page where you can then edit it. And it, I don't have that functionality in, but basically I just wanted to show that, gee, you can move around um, based on the, the details of the um, user type. So um, let's see here. I'm going to go over and you start doing it by clicking on the application. You also can do it from up here and configure ADF security. I'm choosing this one, although these ones are available also. And there are some good videos on ADF Insider, but um, hopefully um, this will be simple enough that um, it will help you. OK, now I'm choosing the HTT basic auth authentication. Now, I could do a form-based one, but frankly, this is easy. It does the work for you. Why bother reinventing the wheel? You'll basically get. Uh, shown a little pop-up saying put in your username and login and um, we'll follow through. There's no automatic grants which means that you have to configure everything to be visible to the user and this is kind of nice because you can say hey if I in fact get in there let's go to the main page. Next. Uh, this is um, the final view and um, you actually get then you can go to well let me open this up just to show you where it is you go over to here and you do secure and you do users now i have two users uh stuart admin and password and stuart user and at password um, then i'm going to go to um i don't have any enterprise roles but that would be something for uh, in the enterprise they're an employee or they're a hr manager I do have application roles and you add new application roles um, at the root level okay and so I have the ad app rule admin and app rule user okay and here is where you would add the users to that um, in this case I only have one user here so I'm going to do that um, bear with me hold on Stuart admin. Oh, he's already been added. I do have two users, but the other one's already been added. And um, for the app role admin, of course, I'm not going to add the user, the Stuart user. Um, basically, those two names are, are meant so that it's easy to distinguish which user has which role. Okay, so you have the two application roles, and then you have to grant role resources to those application roles. You can also grant them to enterprise roles. I'm going to go over to the web page first. The detail page is only going to be available to the admin. So for example, let's say that the main page which shows the de uh, department details is read-only. A admin person would want to be able to update that information. Okay. Now the detail, you would click it here. You can say add application role and then you can just click whatever you want. Now, if you click anonymous, that basically opens it up for anybody who is in the application. They don't need to log on to see it. Um, an authenticated role would be any user that needs to log on and see it. So there's some pages like the main page that everybody needs to see. You might then tighten it down later for other things. So let's see, we're going to do detail and that's going to be, we're going to cancel that out because the person's already in there. The main page is the authenticated role. As I said, 
any user in the system. And then we're going to also have a, a view. This view is a dynamic region in the main page, and that is only open up to the admin app role. And here you would click view for that. If I go to the task flow, again, you have the task flow, and I'm going to add the admin um, user to that. OK, so let's run this and see how it works. OK, I get my username. And log in. And if everything goes right, I get to see my page. Okay, so um, we have the panel header. Um, basically, we can see the department information, and um, the this is the side that is in the um, region. And let me just take a quick look at that so we can see. Here's the, the region, okay? And here are some uh, values that are kind of interesting because they uh, are available. Let me go over here. So this is authenticated. And basically, you get it by going into the Expression Builder. This is already open. ADF Binding Security Context and Authenticated. These region viewable, task view viewable, user granted permission. Some of them are in here. I did not configure everything for it. But you can see that even in the design view, which I'm not logged on, these are showing up as values uh, that it reads just initially. It's very interesting that it does that, but it's kind of helpful because you can actually see, hey, it's working. I have my syntax correct. And in this one, for example, you actually have that in brackets and single quotes, and this one also. So user role in, and you can actually put several in here. Um, I've seen examples of that. And then this is the current user is an, uh, anonymous. And um, OK, so let's go back to our web page. And we can see that uh, the admin user is able to go over to the page um, and make updates. Now we're going to log on as a normal user. I have to actually close this window entirely so that it does not pick up the previous user's permissions. OK. OK. Now we get the same page. However, we do not see the task flow on the side, the uh, dynamic region that was in the main page here. And uh, the interesting thing is that we didn't have to do anything to make this um, invisible. You would have kind of wondered whether you might say, hey, rendered false based on the user. We have this edit record here, and we'll see how that behaves. Um, if you recall, the um, resource grant for the web page, only the uh, admin role has access to this, and we're logged in currently as Stuart user. So let's see how that behaves once we go over there. And it's going to basically bomb out. And the reason is, is that we don't really have anything to hide the button. We really need to hide that button because you don't want to have it available and it's just going to confuse and irritate users. So using the uh, field that we had in the front here, we can say this value Security context user in, actually, I'm going to do user in admin role, since that is the singular. And we'll go over to the rendered here. And click on the expression builder. And that should yield great. Now, why don't we just copy this? And user enroll, and it probably
probably just didn't have the necessarily uh, the necessary brackets and things like that. So now, now when we refresh the page, there is no button there, which is makes sense. We don't want to go in and and cause problems. So that's how you can use the um, text in here to hide items that uh, shouldn't be visible to users based on role and uh, know that the uh, security covers um, the resource grants and the access to certain areas in the form based on what you provide to the users. Okay, I hope that was helpful and uh, that will wrap up this video. Have a good evening.